20 years ago, our first guest finished seventh on American Idol and went on to become an EGOT winner, while everybody who finished ahead of her did not. Now, she reaches the highest peak in show business of all, that of talk show host. Watch the Jennifer Hudson Show weekdays. Please welcome Jennifer Hudson. <laughs> Great to have you here. I'm happy to be here. It feels so different. Does it feel different? Yeah. Are you now evaluating everything? Because you have a talk show and you're looking around and going, this is like this and that's like that. I am. Yeah, it's a funny thing, right? <laughs> it is. Because now I get to be on a talk show as a talk show host being interviewed. That's right. That's it's, what's going through my mind, y'all. It's okay. very meta and very incestuous in some ways, isn't it, really? <laughs> you Are you enjoying this job? I, I think it is the funnest job I have ever had. Really? It's so fun, and I've had a lot of jobs, okay? Listen, you know, because the audience is always amazing, the energy lifts me up. Mm -hmm. That's all I ever need when I come out. I call it the happy place, so it's like a, a party. They get out there and they dance and they sing. They wear their best outfits. Yeah. Everything that I live for, I get to live it every day. What we don't have any of that here. No one dances. <laughs> There's no singing, oh, so and usually like... there's somebody wearing shorts with their big knees in the front. Although tonight, I think, <laughs> well, it rained today, so everybody's pretty uh, clothed. But uh, yeah, it is. Uh, it's an interesting job. It's a weird job to have. Well, I wouldn't, is it weird? Yeah. 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 Especially coming from a singing position. Like I remember when we first started, like the preparation part for it. I said, "We finna go in here and talk again." <laughs> and then I was like, right, it's a talk show. Yes. That part was a little odd. To that, was, me. that was the part that you, <laughs> he hadn't heard the word talk in there. Yeah. Right. It took me a long time to be like, oh, we're going to talk some more. What's your daily routine like? Like, how Because I personally, I get here at 5.15 every morning mm -hmm. uh, to, just, to practice, <laughs> just to practice saying, welcome to the show, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, I take a nap until noon. No, but what is yours? My daily routine. Well, I like to have an inner peace moment. Okay. As soon as I get up, because you, as we know, as soon as we walk into the studio, everybody knocking on the door, and it's a 1,000 people with 10,000 different things to talk about. Mm -hmm. So I like to set my mind and have what I call my David walk, which is my son always takes a walk, like whenever he's here in L.A. So I made a point to have my own, and then I go all the way to the Starbucks, and then somebody picks me up, and then when I get to the studio, it's breakfast time. And then I go to class. I call it class because I'm learning. It's a whole talk showness. Although I will talk your head off, but being in the talk show space, it's a whole new world. Interesting. So I call it going to class. So I go you to class. Think of it as like school. Yeah. And like first each period. meeting is a different uh, subject? Well, yeah, kind of. So first period <laughs> yeah. is the briefing. Okay. Like, where we, you know, discuss what's going to happen throughout the show and the day, who I'm going to meet, who I get to Jenniferize. Okay. And then after that, it's, well, breakfast is before that, which it, breakfast and lunch is like back to back. And then we do a rehearsal. So that second period right there. You eat breakfast and then immediately have lunch? That's what I said. That's why I need the David Walk, because <laughs> we're eating too much. And then having to sit on the couch, I need a little break. So when lunch happens, guess what I do? Dinner. Nope. Oh. <laughs> I thought maybe, I don't know, you're, maybe you're like, I, you're doing intermittent, I, like you got, like I eat for one hour a day and then for 23 It's nothing. a lot of eating. <laughs> it's almost too much. I was like, okay, is at 9.30, then lunch is at like 10.30, and then it's a meeting. But then I ride my bike. Oh, you do? Okay. Yes, I love to ride my bike around a lot. Sometimes I run into the guests and I'm like, hey, you need something from the store? They're like, ain't that Jennifer? Is she shooting the show? And I'm like, I'm so just kidding. I'm do just... people visiting the lot <laughs> see you riding around? Yes. Oh, they must love that, And then huh? sometimes you see the tour buses go by. Yeah. And you speak, or then sometimes you'll be like, I ain't ready yet, and then you dip off to the side and kind of run a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's, uh, <laughs> that's interesting. Boy, I know you're having, you're having like a... You're hosting a talk show in the same way you would see, like, in the movies if somebody was hosting a talk show, riding around the lot, you know, doing all this stuff. I'm just hunched over my computer all day. <laughs> we got to get you a bike. I know, we do. Do you have people now asking you the same questions over and over again? Like, which guest um, have you not had on that you want to have on? Or which guest do you like the most? Which guest did you like the least? 
Yes. Yeah, yeah. That and does happen. Do you have prepared answers for that? Uh, oh, well, you can, can you really be prepared for that? And yeah, then, you have to have one. You don't have, I'm not asking you. So I you would never ask you note. that question. Uh -huh. But if you have one, it just, it ends it. So you can just tell them, yeah, this person, and then you move on. See, but every time I meet new guests, then they become my favorite guests. Okay, yeah. You know? Well, I don't think I have a lease. You have my favorite guest on tomorrow, Charles Barkley. He's a new favorite of mine. Oh, he's a great guest. He was, he's amazing. He is so much fun to interview because <laughs> he will say anything. He will say anything. He has no filter whatsoever. Nobody warned me of that. And a vast array of subjects. He's not limited to basketball by any stretch of the imagination. He is not. I have to say now, Charles, this is the happy place. It's a family show. What are we talking about? Your first guest was, which is a big deal for a talk show, who's your first guest? Your first guest was Simon, Simon Cowell, Cowell. Yes, who was the was. guy yes. who you appeared in front of and who evaluated you. And did he know, and in the America at that point, when you finished seventh, which is so funny to think about, oh, like God. the fact that it really makes you realize America's not good at making decisions, <laughs> right? But see, that's why I wanted to have him as the first guest, because still to this day, People come up and like, I don't watch American Idol no more. They shouldn't have voted each other. And I have to say, you know, that was like 20 years ago, right? I'm yeah. OK. I made it through it. I'm all right. And so I said, what better way to start this new chapter in Journey of My Life than to have Simon Kyle, who helped me start my first journey, which was on American Idol, where, the world, where I was introduced to the world. So he was the first guest. Does he now claim that he knew all along you would be the standout from that group? No. No. He doesn't. No. <laughs> okay. No, but he. He felt so different. Like, he wasn't the same Simon yeah. from America. I don't know. I, I think like, because this? that Simon, if he still existed in this current um, climate, <laughs> would be uh, probably beheaded. And <laughs> they would put his head on a stick of some kind, and they would carry it through a town. You know? You know what? He's yeah. much nicer now. So <laughs> yeah. No need to do that. Yeah, there's no need to do that. <laughs> Rena, as you know, we have to take a break every once in a while for a commercial. We'll be right back with Jennifer Hudson, everybody. <laughs> we are back with Jennifer Hudson. She's got the Jennifer Hudson show every weekday. And how old is your son David now? He said David is 13 now. Does he know? Does he watch your show? And does he know what's going on? He watches it on TikTok, but to him, he does. Of course, the, everything comes from TikTok. Wow! Like I wasn't famous to him. It didn't matter what I did until I got a talk show. So now he calls me Jennifer Hudson. Oh, he does. Yes, Jennifer Hudson. We were at the we were at the All Star <laughs> game, and he wanted to meet King James. And all I heard was Jennifer Hudson. Jennifer Hudson, come over here and introduce us to King James. And I'm like, oh, look, here I come. These are my children. Because I have my son and seven of his cousins, so I call it Camp David. Wow. I roll around with a whole basketball team. Wow, that is a lot of kids. You took yeah. eight kids to the All-Star game? Yes, I did. And then LeBron, did he, he came over? Oh, he came right on over. Thank you. Yeah, he did. Yeah, that's uh, I'm that's to the nice. show, too. <laughs> So your son has realized he's getting positive reinforcement from embarrassing you in public by yelling, shouting out your name. Yeah, I, I guess so. He knows he gets perks from it now. Because, you know, when they're little, they don't know what's going on. No. They see the superheroes, they cool, but not mommy. They, yeah, they are right. They, yeah. That's all they want. But then, yeah, you get to take them to things, and then you get good seats at the game. And really, they're ruined for the rest of their lives, you know? <laughs> right? I mean, where do you go? How do you go sit in the back then when it, you're a oh, teenager? There's no line waiting. Yeah. Yeah, none of that stuff yeah. at all. None of that stuff. Yeah, you have to explain that to him and to his cousins also, especially the cousins. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I guess I think I've spoiled them all. <laughs> yeah, well, once LeBron James shows up, there's really not much you can do. But I get cool points, though. Do you, does he have a phone at this age? Oh, yes, he does. Oh, he does, OK. He has a phone. How old do you think is the right age for a kid to get a phone? That's a tough question. Yeah. Uh, maybe 12. 12, OK. I that seems think... reasonable, right? And they, but you got to check their phone, though. Well, yeah. Do you, oh, do you go through his phone? Mm hmm Oh, you do? Yes, I'm Mama Hood. I'm going to check their phone. And do, does he know you go through the phone? He know now if he didn't know. Uh. <laughs> well, hopefully we'll... ah! Maybe if this one isn't on TikTok, he won't see it, you know? <laughs> Maybe, but yeah. everything's on TikTok. So what are we supposed to do? But we do text. You do. OK, you text. And do you text him? Do you send long, confusing, sometimes meandering and rambling text messages to your son like most moms do? I, I think every mom does that, right? Well, my dad is more guilty of that than my mother is, for sure. Yeah? Yeah, absolutely. Uh oh Yes. I mean, there's like, I'll get long texts about his shoulder. You know. <laughs> 
about his shoulder? Yeah, he likes to cover all the body parts. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't send him nothing like that, though. But I do. I will shoot him a text. You will shoot. Okay. Now, what we're, we've done here tonight, and we were wondering if you would be so kind as to play a role in this, and, and that okay. is, we've collected. These are real text messages from the parents of people who work on our staff. Oh, okay. And I know you're a talk show host, but let's not also, you know, you came into our lives as a singer. And so um, I was wondering if you would be so kind as to put some of these, again, real texts to music. Real texts? You want yeah. me to sing it to the music? Yes. Well, you can do it however you like, but I'll give you the, um, we'll start with the first text, which is there at the top of the page. This one is from a young lady named Heather who works here from her dad. <laughs> Uh, who was experiencing some laundry drama. Okay. Okay. So, if you would. You, you Let know, me see what my... It up there, too, if you want What's to on there. my spirit, if I could give you something. Okay. Hum, can I get a... Hum, can you give me that chord? <laughs> Say, my grandma took my socks out of the sock bag <laughs> and she washed them. Now, Jimmy, tell me why she do it. <laughs> As a result, I am missing my black Louis lemon sock. <laughs> Can you check through the clothes that she washed for you? Hey, yeah. Can I get it? Yeah. yeah. Now, let me see where I'm at. So there was a blue pair of socks. Ha! I said a blue pair of socks. Ha! They were in my sock bag. They do not belong to me. They are either yours or your, your, your mama. <laughs> I can't believe you finished seventh. That's ridiculous. <laughs> All right, the next one, that, was, that was absolutely incredible. Oh this one is from though. Jamie's mom. <laughs> Jamie is a writer here at the show. And um, I think her mom has a lot going on. Here we go. Okay, okay. Number two. Number two. Can I get a... Should we do one more? One more. All right, let's see. Any one of these look uh, particularly interesting to you? Number I two. like that last one. You like that last one? All right, that was from Jamie also, all right? Because Jamie, they, they told Jamie what they need to say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you need any music for this? Jamie! I said Jamie, Jamie, Jamie! She said, 